Um, good morning, I'm Mark Rowley, I'm Acting Deputy Commissioner and I want to update you in relation to the um, recent incident on the following areas. I want to talk about the speed and the breadth of our investigation. I want to make a particular appeal for the public's health and I want to provide further details on the ongoing police response. But firstly, in relation to those who were injured, sadly last night another man died in hospital as, as a result of the injuries sustained during the attack. Whilst we await formal identification, we believe that he is Leslie Rhodes, age 75, from Streatham in South London. My thoughts are with his family at this time. Furthermore, two people remain in hospital in what is described as critical condition, and one person is considered to have life-threatening injuries. Two of our officers, who were injured on Westminster Bridge in the attack, also remain in hospital and also sustains very significant injuries. At least 50 people were injured, with 31 requiring hospital treatment as the attack unfolded, and those affected include a real cross-section of ages from at least 12 nationalities. It's a poignant reminder, I think, that the impact of this attack on the capital will reach around the world. So, moving on to our investigation. The Counter-Terrorism Command Investigation, Operation Classific, continues involving hundreds of officers from across the National Counter-Terrorism Network. This is a very large, fast-paced investigation and I want to give you as much information as possible and I do want to make a critical appeal to the public. Yesterday we named the dead terrorist as Khalid Massoud. We stated he had a number of, a number of aliases and we do know his birth name was Adrian Russell. I would like to put on record my gratitude to journalists who, having identified the dead terrorist soon after the attack, have delayed publishing his details at my request to give us more space to move on the necessary warrants and searches that have continued. As I've said previously, our investigation focuses on understanding his motivation, his preparation and his associates. Whilst there is still no evidence of further threats, you will understand our determination is to find out if either he acted totally alone, inspired by perhaps terrorist propaganda, or if others have encouraged, supported or directed him. To that end, in our continuing investigation and ongoing covert activity, we have made two further significant arrests overnight, one in the West Midlands and one in the North West. We now have nine people remaining in custody and one woman has been released on bail. We have five searches and addresses continuing and 16 searches concluded. So far we've seized 2,700 items from these searches, including massive amounts of computer data for us to work through. We've, we've had contact with about 3,500 witnesses including a thousand people from Westminster Bridge and about two and a half thousand who were within the parliamentary estate and we've received hundreds of uploads of, of uh, video images to our online platform. Um, given this attack was in the heart of the capital we're also of course dealing with statements from a wide range of nationalities and so at this point I would like to appeal specifically to the public. We remain keen to hear from anyone who Khalid Massoud, uh, who, anyone who knew Khalid Massoud well. Anybody who understands who his associates were, anyone who can provide information about the places he's recently visited. There might well be people out there who did have concerns about Massoud, but weren't sure or didn't feel comfortable for whatever reasons in passing that information to us. I now urge anyone with such information to call us. Please contact us on the Antares hotline 0800 789 321. I want to move on in terms of our arrangements for protective security. Firstly, to talk about Parliament. I understand why a tragic event such as this generates questions about the security of Parliament. Our current arrangements have been developed with Parliament over many years and are designed to provide access to the seat of our government, balanced carefully with security that is proportionate but not overly intrusive. 
Of course, after an incident like this, as would be expected, my team will work with parliamentary authorities to assess whether a different tone or a different balance is necessary. More widely across the country, the police service will sustain an enhanced armed and unarmed presence over the next few days. London and the UK are open for business and we're out there in greater numbers to make sure the public see a high presence to help reassure them as they go about their daily lives. In London, the number of armed officers remains at nearly double strength, whilst in other parts of the UK there are up to a third more officers on duty. Finally, reflecting on last night, a true cross-section of people came together to stand together and remember in, in, in Trafalgar Square, but also to send a message, a strong message, to those inspired by hate and extremism of all persuasions that we will not give in to those who seek to breed discord, discord and fear. This is now as true as it's ever been, and our acting commissioner, Craig Mackey, told thousands last night who gathered in central London that terrorists have tried to tear the city apart before. They have never succeeded. The very fact that London has gone back to work today and so many were happy to gather in central London last night shows they failed. We would like to thank our officers and staff who continue to work around the clock, both investigating this atrocity and continuing to keep the city safe. From the staff picking up and picking up the calls, responding in our control centres, through to those officers guarding iconic buildings, and of course, officers patrolling the streets in the city centre and in every borough across London. Finally, I'd like to say we're grateful for the continued support of the public and the strong and calm response that's been shown. I know that we will continue to stand together. Mr. Rowling, we understand that Khalid Masood had travelled overseas at one point. Do you have any more detail on that that you can share? At this stage, I think it would be wrong for me to say any more than the Prime Minister said in Parliament yesterday. Um, we're looking at his history. Um, he had, in, several years ago, been a peripheral figure. Um, he's never been part of the mainstream intelligence picture about terrorism. Do you believe that there are people actively withholding evidence or information about this man? We know from um, many of our past investigations, from the 13 plots that we foiled over the last three years, that there are people who, in hindsight, knew things that either felt too cautious to come forward or were reluctant to. What we're appealing to today is to the public to say, if, even in hindsight now, you realise something about Colin Massoud, something about his associates, something about his movements, something about his planning, now is the time to come forward and speak to our officers on 0800 789 321. A couple more questions and I'll finish. Can you give any details about his radicalisation? So you ask about his radicalisation. Um, clearly that's the main line of our investigation is what led him to be radicalised. Um, was it through influencers in our community, influencers from overseas or through online propaganda? Our investigations and our arrests will help in that but the public appeal will make a big difference if people come forward with more information. Mr. A last question. Mr. Rowley, why did Mr. Craig Mackey leave the scene? Why didn't he stay to help the uh, PCP? It's frustrating when we're wrestling with an issue like this and the acting commissioner is doing an excellent job that we get nonsense from armchair critics. Can we focus, please, on the investigation and the public this appeal? Thank you. One more question. Thank you very much. Well,